Hello again. Uh, so in this exercise, we're working with uh, what is called grouped data again. So we uh, we don't have the raw data. We don't have the data set itself, but rather we have the frequency distribution of the data. Uh, now we've done one exercise with this data set, uh, or sorry, with this frequency distribution, where we estimated the mean. And so here we have uh, that mean value uh, calculated in a in a previous video. Uh, for a previous exercise of uh, $122,830. Now we're going to use that information to calculate the variance and the standard deviation. So again, uh, without having the, the raw data to work with, just having this frequency distribution, the first step that we need to do is calculate uh, the midpoints. And so that's just the midpoint of of the range uh, or the class that is being used. So in this example, I have that first class is 60 to 79. So we can use our calculator and find the middle of that, 60 plus 79 divided by 2. So that's 69.5. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I know the midpoint for each of these uh, is, is as follows, 89.5. 109.5, 129.5, 149.5, and finally 169.5. So those are our midpoints, the middle of each of the relevant classes. And we have here our frequencies, and notation we're going to use for the frequency is uh, fi. So how do we get our variance without having the specific data. Well, the procedure is similar uh, to what we've done, only now because we don't have the exact data points, we work with the midpoint, so the midpoint of each class minus the mean, which we've calculated, and we have that down here, 122.83. We square that difference, so this is similar to variances that we've calculated before, except that we're using the midpoint. We weight it, now this is one thing that is different, we're going to weight it by the, the frequency, so the number of observations within that class. And then we add all of these together across k classes. So how many classes do we have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, six so I have k equals six classes and then as we've done uh, with other measures of variance we divide that uh, by n minus 1 which is now in this case uh, going to be equal to the sum of those frequencies I equals 1 through k minus 1 so a little bit different, but it's essentially uh, a very similar calculation to, to what we did before, except we're using midpoints, and we're weighting it by the number of uh, observations within that class or that corresponds with that midpoint. So here's our formula for the variance uh, using uh, the, the classes of this frequency distribution. So the first thing I'm going to do then, we'll go ahead and calculate just the numerator. Uh, of, of this calculation and then we'll add it all up and uh, we'll, we'll go on from there. So let's uh, let's see, I'm going to just add in as a title here, so here's what we're going to be calculating x bar squared. Okay, so we're going to go through six calculations. So the first one that I'm going to do, uh, I'll write it out longhand for the first one, but I'm not going to do it for for each of them. So for the first one, the frequency of interest is 2, so this will be 2 times this midpoint, 69.5 minus our mean. Now, we're in thousands of dollars US, so this is actually going to be 122.8. I'll just round it a little bit to 0 0.8. This is all an approximation anyways. Uh, so let's just keep it to one decimal. So this will be one, uh, 122.8 squared. So this one, if I get my calculator, so I'm going to calculate 
0.5 minus 122.8. I'm going to square that, and I'm going to times that by 2. So 5681.78. Fifty six eighty one point seventy eight. Now the next one is going to be four. So this is a four times the next midpoint eighty nine point five minus that mean that never changes one twenty two point eight squared. Okay. So 89.5 minus 122.8 equals, square that, times that by 4, 44.35.56, 44.35.56. So now I have to do that four more times. I've done the first two classes in this frequency distribution. So I'm going to skip through. Uh, I'm not going to write out in detail uh, each of the next steps. So the next one I'm working with the frequency, uh, the midpoint, sorry, is 109.5 minus 122.8. And I square that, times that by my frequency is 7. So 1238.23. Okay, now the next midpoint, I'm at 129.5 minus my mean, whoops, squared times uh, 9 is my corresponding frequency, 404.01. So now I'm at this one, I'm at the fifth class. So my midpoint is 149.5 minus my mean squared times five observations in that class, 35, 64, 45. And the last one 169.5 minus 122.8 squared times 3, 6542, 6542, 67, 67, 42, 67, phew. Okay, we've got all those calculations done. So what we have here is this part. We've calculated all of these. Now we have to add them together. So if I add all of these up, 56, 44.35, plus 12.38, Whew. 21, 866, 7. 21, 866.7. Let me just check that I've written that down right. Good. So that's our numerator. 21, 866.7 divided by. Now, this sum of the frequencies, so that's this piece here. We're just adding together all of this. So this is 2 plus 4, oops, what happened there? 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9 plus 5 plus 3. So I have 30, 30 minus 1 equals. Point seven divided by 29. And finally, we have our variance 754. So there's our variance of these administrator salaries. 
from this now this is going to be measured in dollars squared kind of difficult to interpret dollars squared so we can take the square root of that in order to find the standard deviation and this is going to be let's see 27 about 27 and a half 27.5 is my standard deviation. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a bit of tedious calculations, uh, but as you can see, it's not exceedingly difficult calculations, it's just that there's a lot of them, uh, and they're very repetitive, and so there's lots of room for error. As I go through this, making these videos, I can only hope that I haven't made a silly mistake uh, causing me to have to re-record <laughs> these videos. If you're seeing this, I guess that means that it's uh, it's correct. So let's go through part B, calculate the coefficient of variation. I'm going to move over to this corner here, my coefficient of variation. This is our standard deviation divided by our sample mean. So, oh, and we times it by 100 so that we have a percentage. So 27.5 divided by 122.8. And so that now gives us, divide this by 122.8. And we have 22.4%. This is times 100. 22.4%. So our standard deviation is 22.4% of our mean. Now again, I'm going to repeat myself. These values, the variance, standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation are not exceedingly useful on their own. It is a measure of the spread of observations. The standard deviation is very useful when we get into this concept of relative location or relative shape, and we'll talk about that uh, in other videos. Uh, the coefficient of variation is useful when we're comparing different data sets uh, against each other, so we can identify if one data set is more dispersed or has a higher variation than another. So on their own, these numbers, uh, don't try to extract too much from them uh, individually. They're, they're most useful uh, for making comparisons uh, across data sets or in the case of the standard deviation uh, for calculating uh, information on relative location, uh, which we'll talk about in the next set of videos. So I hope that this has helped, um, helped you calculate some of these tedious, uh, these tedious calculations. Uh, hopefully um, they'll be much easier for you to work with now. Thank you very much.